Tornado Cash has been in the news for a while at this point, but there's something about the whole situation that really bothers me. But before I get into that, I want to give a quick overview of what Tornado Cash is. So Tornado Cash works on the Ethereum blockchain, which is the second largest cryptocurrency behind Bitcoin in terms of market cap. ETH is a coin that is native to the Ethereum blockchain, but besides the Ethereum blockchain supporting the ETH coin, it also supports ERC-20, which is a standard for tokens. A popular token or coin that you might have heard of on the Ethereum blockchain is Shiba Inu or SHIB. So let's say that Alice wants to send Bob one ETH. All Alice needs is Bob's wallet address. Wallet addresses are a public string of letters and numbers. While at first this might look like it provides some privacy, which it does, if anyone is able to identify who might be using that wallet address, whether that's through transaction patterns, withdrawal history, or anything else, then all privacy is lost. Each transaction that occurs is recorded on the blockchain, which is public and permanent. This means that if someone knew your wallet address, they could use a blockchain explorer freely available online to check your balance, your transactions, when those transactions occurred, and other wallets you received ETH from or sent ETH to. At that point, it's like having your credit card statement publicly available and updating in near real time. Now this is where Tornado Cash comes in. Bob wants to disassociate himself from the ETH he received from Alice, and he also wants to disassociate it from himself. He takes his one ETH from his wallet, deposits it into Tornado Cash. He's given what could be considered a deposit slip, which he will use at a later time to withdraw his funds. And at this point, Bob's original wallet now has zero ETH. So while he waits, his one ETH that he initially deposited is being cycled around in the pool of ETH that Tornado Cash has from other users that are also using the service. And after a certain amount of time, Bob now uses his deposit slip plus a new wallet to withdraw the amount he originally deposited, which was one ETH. It's important to note that he's not getting that exact one ETH that he deposited originally into the pool. He's just getting one ETH from the pool. At this point, there's now a disconnect between the deposit and withdrawal from Tornado Cash, and the history tied to that ETH originally is now gone. All that would show on a blockchain explorer is that a wallet received one ETH from a Tornado Cash wallet. Someone online used the analogy that you put a drop of water into a swimming pool, which allows you to take out one drop of water at a later time. You won't get that same drop of water, but what you will get is equivalent to what you put in. It's also worth noting that Tornado Cash runs without human intervention. It is decentralized and runs autonomously. So while that wasn't oversimplification, there's a lot more that goes into it on the technical side that is the general overall concept. So then on August 8th, 2022, the U.S. Treasury sanctioned Tornado Cash. The reasons being that it had been used to launder more than $7 billion worth of virtual cryptocurrency since 2019, along with $455 million stolen by Lazarus Group, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll link to the press release in the description box with all the details if you'd like to read about it some more. So was Tornado Cash used to launder crypto? Probably. Do banks launder money? Probably. But that's still not the part that I find disturbing. The disturbing part happened on August 10th, two days after the sanctions were placed on Tornado Cash. One of the Tornado Cash developers, Alexei Pertsev, was arrested in Amsterdam over ties to Tornado Cash. A judge in the Netherlands ruled that Pertsev is to be held in jail for a further three months pending a trial, even though no formal charges have been made. So to reword that, an open source developer was arrested for how his code was used. And not because he used it in a malicious way, but because someone else allegedly did. This is what I have a problem with and for the ramifications it can cause in the future for other developers and for innovation in general. You probably know that I talk a lot about Graphene OS on this channel, which is an open source Android OS. If someone is using Graphene OS on their phone and they make a phone call or send a text message while committing a crime, does that mean the developers are guilty of the user's actions? If I bury a body with a shovel that I bought from Home Depot, does the store get charged as an accessory to the crime since they sold me the shovel? Is the person that cashed me out at the store also guilty of something? I don't really know what more to say about this topic, but I think it's important to be aware of. The fact he hasn't formally been charged yet shows that the authorities don't really know what's going on yet. Crypto is a new realm for governments, and they don't really know how to regulate it. The fact that one of the first things they decide to do is arrest an open source developer just baffles me. While instead they could be going after the crypto scammers out there who have been publicly scamming people for a few years now. Some good news about this is that yesterday on September 22nd, GitHub unbanned the Tornado Cash repo. It is currently in read-only mode, but at least that's a step in the right direction. So regardless of how you feel about how Tornado Cash was used with crypto, 
I hope we can all agree at least that the open source developer is not the one who should be in jail at this point, unless there's something we're not being told about the entire situation. That's about all I have to say about this topic at this time. And don't forget to support any open source projects that might be giving you some value.